Okay, probably you saw the you have seen this. It is presentation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, the um, the, uh, the the reason why we had to uh, install this uh, plugin was to be able to edit this uh, data JSON file where we just type uh, our translations. Uh, where we define the, the languages and the um, titles or measurement names or dimension names to which we want to translate. And after we edit this file, we have to restart NPM and restart the Grafana service as well. And the, the last step is to uh, uh, set the proper variables inside the Grafana. Variables, they work like kind of uh, filters or selectors, which uh, make the, the dashboard interactive. And there is like this uh, special format we need to use, uh, which is like default format of this uh, plugin. We have this uh, data word, it has to stay like this and ID word. We just need to change the variable name and ID of the word which we want to translate. So maybe I will... I, I, because it seems like I'm uh, <laughs> presenting it twice. So, yeah. Like once by teams and once just by, okay. Uh, I will show you the file and how it corresponds to the, to the settings in Grafana. I know I start sharing. Okay. So this is a proper like default Definitions are set commas, the languages which are here inside this file. So if I add, I don't know, PL here, then I just need to add it like, you know, just type PL. It is kind, it is custom type of the variable. And then this variable is being used other variables so this all like translation variables are dependent on the slate 100 uh, titles and measure names we need to add so many uh, as as many uh, variables inside the grafana and um, yeah it it can be time consuming, but in Grafana, we can edit like the definition of dashboard in JSON files. So we can just do kind of copy paste or write some uh, automatic, uh, I don't know, script creation, etc. I will show you how it works in the, in the Grafana. We will switch to Grafana now. Uh, so this is my Grafana installation. It works on like uh, my local computer port 3000. And here it's the dashboard which stores data from my computer like CPU usage, disk usage, and so on. It's like the easiest option to, to learn Grafana to install this kind of, um, it just reads the, uh, it reads the data from computer sensors. Uh, and we set these variables on dashboard uh, level. So the first variable which I had to set was this language variable where I just uh, type separated by comma the languages which are defined in this file. So I could have like some. And the other variables are dependent on this one. And they, so they use the simple JSON data connector. 
So we just select type query and simple JSON data connector. And this is the structure uh, which they need to, to, work, to be working fine. So here we could either type, for example, like EN, then we would have the translation only for EN or FR, or we can type the variable, which was previously, um, sorry, which was previously uh, defined. So then it's like more interactive. And here we just type the word, uh, like ID of the word which should be translated. Usually, and stays the same. So in Grafana, we have three places where we can change like display name, also in overrides. Overrides work uh, for um, replacing the, for uh, changing the formatting just of the one, uh, one measure. So if I change it in all, then all of the measures would have different, like would have the same name. But if I change it in overrides, then just I'm assigning the name to, yes, just to the, to the one uh, one measure inside. So yeah, it works like this, but actually it appeared that it's not working for aliasing. And this, uh, this is like a huge disadvantage for the solution. Also, we can put alias here inside the query. So where we just, um, Query this uh, specific uh, measure. We could put it here, but here it doesn't work as well. So, uh, yes, that is one solution. I didn't check. There is new uh, a simple JSON uh, connector, like simple JSON database connector. Maybe with this one it works better, but I, I didn't check it. So, uh, yeah. I just wanted to show it. If someone needs for the project just translation of titles, <laughs> it would work. So here the... Agnieszka, the sorry. Uh, yeah. We have one question uh, in our chat from Serhii. Uh, yeah. Where is the language variable is defined? Could you show please oh, where okay. it came from? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, so first we need to set this language variable, yes? And we just do it like uh, as we want. I can create the new one. I can call it like lang, just like I need, I need to have a different name. And it's custom variable. And we just type what we want by like comma separated. Uh, for example, D E F R. And this type of variable just displays what we type here. And we need to follow this uh, naming of languages which we have in this JSON file. Yes, if we like type cap in capital letter EN, then we need to have it like in capital letter here. And if I said update, it is just new variable. And later we use this variable inside this specific words which we want to translate. So I'm not sure, is it like enough explanation? Yes, yeah, so he uh, he'd write fine things. Yeah, so it looks quite easy. It's not so problematic to change this uh, IDs. Uh, we just copy the square and change the IDs here. So it's quite easy option, but it, it appeared at the end that it doesn't work with this aliasing, which is a big disadvantage. And in Grafana, we have the definition of the dashboards we have in JSON file. So if we need to add something really similar, 
So also these variables are defined here. So when we need something similar, we, we can just copy it and pro produce it yet, yes, somewhere else in the text file and just paste it here. So just replacing the, this word, then it would point to the different translation. Uh, I will show you later how I used, for example, Excel file to create this, um, this type of translations. Like actually I didn't use, I didn't find any um, tool which allows, for example, to automatic JSON generate on, gen, gen, automatic JSON generate something like this. Yes, it would be great to be able just that I set the variables and it automatically, uh, gets like this code so then we can just paste it so usually when i need to uh, add a lot of similar things to the dashboard i just copy and paste and just replace some words but of course it could be like autom automatized uh, somehow better and when we add the new variable it automatically appears uh, at the top of the dashboard and if we want to hide it, because sometimes we may have a um, variable which is being used later, but we don't want to show it, we just set hide variable and then it's not visible like this. So this is the first solution which works mainly for the titles. Uh, and yes, it appeared uh, later, I, I found it on this website with this solution here where I took it from, that some people wrote that it's not working for, for aliasing. And then someone came out with the second solution, which I will uh, this present now, uh, which seems to be uh, much easier to, to implement and to store the translations. It's about just um, creating a kind of translation tables on the um, database layer, data source layer. Uh, so this uh, um, so here I have the admin panel for the uh, data source, which is InfluxDB. Uh, so when we install Grafana, first we need to connect it to any database, and this is also like a open source for free a tool where we can uh, define the data. And I created a separate. Um, it's called bucket here. It's like a database just for translations because uh, here we will use these translations as kind of ali aliases. So it doesn't need to be correlated to, to data. And uh, so I just created a new data storage, which is called bucket. Uh, I just set a create new. Uh, and later I use it in. Uh, 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 in Grafana for uh, for the second solution. Actually, sometimes I <laughs> get lost if I should show you know the program or the uh, the presentation. So yeah, this is the summary of this uh, solution where I just put entries in by line protocol into InfluxDB entries with these translations. Again, it's also um, described on this high vice uh, uh, forum. Uh, and it is much easier because inside this InfluxDB uh, administrator panel, we have a place where we can just enter manually or upload a file with translations. There is also possibility to do it by uh, some comments. I tried this. I struggled a lot because all the time I had some errors. Uh, but at the end, as I remember, I did it. But later I check. Now there is like graphical tool inside this admin panel to do it. It's much easier line protocol. And sorry, I wanted to open. So there is example of such file uh, with these translations. First, we just define the table name. It's in, in InfluxDB, it's called um, tax uh, container, but we can understand it as a table. 
then a reference, which is like translation ID, and then all of the translations separated uh, with comma. And at the end, we need to type any value. It could be zero, one, or whatever. And in this format, we need to remember about one thing that at the end, we need to have a space because it, this space, it says that we want to uh, have a null timestamp like it's not null so when we have the space at the end it just adds these rows with the current date so the date of now uh, if we would like to have different uh, timestamp when we upload it we would need to have something like this yes we would need to add a timestamp in this format but for translations which were uh, which are just kind of uh, aliases. We don't need any specific timestamp. So I will show you how I did it. Like when I, I when I was adding this uh, translation, so I just uh, set the data line protocol. First, yeah, I tried to, to upload five, but it there were some problems with this like nanoseconds precision, etc. So finally, I just did it manually. This is just example, yes. So this file, it is just example from this website, from this uh, Hive Eyes. Uh, I will show you later, like how to uh, place the new translation. So I just copied, put it here, and set right data, and then it uh, it appeared inside this translations uh, uh, translations uh, database. So term, so firstly, we, it, it is this um, tax container. We can understand it as a table. So it was placed in term. Then the reference column, which is the name of the like ID of the translated word. And then we can see like German version, Dutch version, etc. So we see it is here. The important thing is that I set a custom time range because when I put these translations, it was um, October. So if I said like, I don't know, past 24 hours, we wouldn't see it. So I set the custom time range for like last six months. So this one, I, I created separate bucket. It's totally, it's totally different one than this where I have data. So we are sure we are not mixing anything. It is quite difficult to manage this, this data. So in this line protocol, there is no option to remove, etc. Uh, probably it can be done by some um, command line or there is a program inside the influx, but it doesn't work. Uh, so there is this influx installation. Uh, it, okay, no, I'm kind of lost. So there is like CLI for, for, for influx. Oh, maybe it was here. Yes, there is like Grafana CLI exe. So this is the program where we can um, type, uh, when we can manage the, the like all plugins, etc. inside the program, but it doesn't work. It works uh, on, uh, on Linux. So yeah. So it's quite difficult to manage this influx DB uh, data. Maybe there are some, I don't know, special special tools for it. Or maybe we need to install any plugin inside here so it, then we can manage it. But I, I didn't need it uh, for this presentation. So we have this um, translations place inside the database and there is some struggle on uh, there was some struggle to add it here. Uh, so first of all, when we have like a new database or new bucket, it's called like this, we need to add it like new data source here. And I add this InfluxDB translations data source. There are two types of languages. And there was this a problem with, uh, with setting properly um, this um, new database to use InfluxQL. So the newest version of Grafana by default uses the flux, which is, I, I hate it, it's a disaster, a disaster and it takes much more time to 
write any queries there and to retrieve anything from a database. So to make uh, it possible to use Influx in QL, I had to do some, some steps. Um, okay. I had to do some steps uh, in like, I did it in PowerShell. So there are some uh, commands you need to do to assign the database name to the existing bucket. So the newest version of, graph, uh, of uh, uh, Grafana, new, newest version of Influx, InfluxDB, it possesses only the bucket IDs. So when you create the new uh, bucket, it has just bucket ID, but it doesn't have the database name. So this would be like null, null here. There would be nothing here. So to have the name of the database, uh, we need to do all of these three steps. It's like first configuration creation. The second step is just checking if we have any database mapped to the specific bucket. And the, the third step is actually to mapping any name to existing bucket. So I just map a translations name and later it is needed for for setting uh, the connection to grafana so in grafana i um, i set this um, influx db type of data source i set influx ql language which is much easier for retrieval of data and the default port for uh, for influx is 8086 and then the settings of authorization to, to this new translation bucket. So this is quite interesting. I can show you if like new, adding the new header. So normally it's empty here, yes. So if I, so the easiest way to connect this influx database with Grafana is to uh, authenticate by tokens. So when we have the bucket, we have also the tokens and we need to have a token which has a read-write read, um, read, write, uh, access and I have such a token. So we can create here tokens with different accesses, uh, but this one I use as a kind of admin one. It has, um, all of these accesses to read, write to buckets, etc. This one was most important. And here, this is kind of the password, yes, the token. So I just copied this uh, password. I can copy it now. And in Grafana, to add like authorization by this token, we need to write authorization. It's quite funny, just type the word. And here in the value, we need to not just paste the token itself, but write token word. So just like write token space, and then we type the, uh, the uh, then we paste this token, which we copied. So I just type token space and paste the, I can check if I don't break it. <laughs> now I'm kind of, uh, if I remove it, I'm afraid that I can break it. Maybe I can add the new one. It will be safer. So I just type a local host 8086. Oh my God, I need to add HTTP, I'm not sure. And uh, here I'm adding the header. Um, Authorization type token and paste it and then base translations okay. and it's not working. <laughs> I check maybe I need to HTTP here. Okay. So I wanted to show you how it works and it's not working. Maybe I need to copy it once more the token. So I don't know if I 
Mm. Don't know if I omit anything. Last time I checked it and it was working. It's usually like this. Maybe check your HTTP server that you are sending the request to. The one local host 8080 mm -hmm. or something like that. Yes, but actually it's just this one, you know? It was this one. It's this uh, InfluxDB. Mm. Oh, okay, it's working. So I made a mistake here in translation. So this whole topic, why we had to assign this translation and uh, translation like any name, yes, to the database because it's empty for the new for the newest InfluxDB um, version is because we had to type a database name here. So normally in the latest uh, InfluxDB, we don't have this database name. So this is why we had to do all of the steps. And there are some uh, here, I put uh, URLs where there is documentation, how to write it correctly. Um, and it works only in this way. So if we, if we create like new, Mm, connection to InfluxDB. Mm, usually, like with the newest Grafana version, we there is only a flux. And if we want to have flux QL, we need to have this database name. Okay, and later uh, we show you how it uh, how we can see this data inside the. Okay, mm. so I have a dashboard which already has, uh, which already uses this uh, translation, JSON translation file. So, sorry, not this one. Uh, this file which we put inside this line protocol, mm. this file. So this second solution, yes. So uh, I have a dashboard which already uses it. Is, and it is slightly different, the retrieval of these variables, uh, but the beginning is the same. So firstly, I call it select. We need to create this custom variable uh, where we define the languages. And these languages in our files are like here, yes, English, Dutch, French, German. Uh, we just said update. And then we create for each specific uh, translation, the, the separate variable. And this is like the proper retrieval of InfluxDB uh, data source. So this is the, the query we need to type. And uh, here we specify this variable, which we previously created for language selection and here we have the reference so the row which it corresponds to yes so the row which we want to uh, take as a as a translation uh, yeah so again the, the the this advantage is quite similar that we need to create as many variables as we have titles or measures or dimensions and of course we have these definitions here of the variables. So we can just uh, copy this and place some new, just changing this word here. So this will like retrieve the, the new translations. And uh, the difference to the previous solution is that it works with aliasing. So we, I have like example in title, um, but also in overrides. So in this overrides where we can assign different formatting to one measure and different to another, I set the display name and here I have T daily. So the variable for it is daily, maybe it's not the best example. And the second one is T hourly. So the naming is different for each measure. And when we change it, it's changing here on, uh, on, the, on the bottom. 
and also it should be changing yes here inside the tooltip and it works also for the titles yes so now we have like uh, all information on the visualization translated and this from my point of view this solution is quite uh, nice and easy to uh, maintain etc so the the biggest uh, the <laughs> biggest problem is to maybe assign this uh, database name by this uh, commands which was like curious this is quite um, i don't know why they did it like this that in older versions it worked with this influx ql and now we need to do the steps to make this influx ql available um, but I think the benefits are quite uh, quite good. Uh, however, so then I presented this solution to the customer and they asked to check if it works for sure everywhere, this type of variables. And um, I checked, I will show you now the, uh, in fact, the example of our project. So I presented like, it was um, like naming uh, of measures from the project and uh, they wanted to have it in English and Turkish, yes. So on the top it's English, on the bottom it's Turkish. Uh, and later it appeared because they, they use quite a lot of functionalities of Grafana and there are some transformations, there are some like value mappings. And it, it appeared that it doesn't work in two cases, but this uh, type, this is not very like commonly used, I think not on every project. So this is the, some sh shortage of this, but it's not the big uh, disadvantage. So first is value mappings. It is a functionality where you have, for example, a number like status, uh, like zero, one, two, three, and you want to assign an, uh, an, a name to this status, yes? So for example, if there is one, you want to display something. And here, this uh, uh, type of translation doesn't work. So you could just display it only in one language. And the same for transformation, which is called renaming by regex. So in some, some types of visualization, we don't have this option to rename a measure or, or something. So we need to use this kind of transformation just for renaming. And it doesn't work, this, this type of, like variables doesn't work there at all uh, in this, this type of transformation. So there are these two uh, situations when it doesn't work. Uh, I wanted to show you why I don't like Flux. So Flux, this is this default language for the uh, newest, uh, newest uh, Grafana version. And um, so this on the bottom, you see this like retrieval of this, sorry. So on the bottom, you see, in influx ql it's quite short to retrieve the translation for this asic dosing prompt and in flux it is so long so i also struggle to retype it in flux so this is why i hate it so basically if you don't want to map this database name if you want to skip this step you would need to use flux and it's quite it looks like this mm, so yeah for me a less convenient uh, and also there is like solution free, which I, so when they asked me to investigate this topic, this is the first thing I thought about that we could have translations on like raw data level. So here there is example of, if we want to type a new data, we could do it by this line protocol. So this is example how the data is being stored in this uh, in FlexDB. So first we have tags, for example, CPU is like a tag container and CPU equals CPU one, it's a tag. It's like a description to a value, yes? So it, it corresponds to CPU one, region US East uh, one, and then we have the values. So we could have each row multiplicated by each language. And then on the bottom, I just represented it as a table, maybe not the best way just to make it more understandable that we are adding like, if we, if we would like to somehow pivot it to the table, it would be like adding new columns. 
So if we, have, if we want to have five languages, it will be multiplication of data by five. So it's, I think it's totally inconvenient. And this was just a solution we didn't even take into consideration, but it could be possible to like assign the new tag language. And then inside the Grafana, we would create a variable language. So if, we, if the user select, uh, selects en, for example, then he retrieves only this row on the top. If he selects ZE, then he retrieves this, uh, uh, the row on the bottom. And also we could, in this way, we could also translate, uh, for example, the dimensions. So instead of CPU1 in German, it would be C1. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I, um, I was uh, um, not sure if we need to have, like when we have this in the row uh, version, we can ask ourselves if it matters if we have language at the beginning yes, of this row. So uh, from my point of view, it doesn't matter. Maybe it just would look better, but for, for this uh, InfluxDB database, if we um, filter by CPU or CE1 or uh, language DE, it just tells the, the engine that we want to select this one specific uh, row. Uh, so, um, we, uh, so if we, for example, filter by language DE, we just select this row on the, on the, on the bottom. And then the CPU would be C C eins like automatically. Yeah, and I wrote here that it's totally inconvenient because we don't want the multiplication of data because of the performance and, and the maintenance and, and so on, yes. Yeah, I wanted to show you a demo. Yeah, I struggled a little bit also in preparing for this presentation uh, that it's quite difficult to show everything uh, on the slides at first, and then just move to the uh, to the like presenting the real case because it's uh, difficult in this type of presentation. Uh, so we have these two versions. First, using the first solution where we are able just to translate the titles, and this first solution use this data JSON file. I would like to show you what happens if I add the new language here. I have this example. Okay. I have it somewhere, but okay. I would just, I would just. Uh, type from hand. So if we would like to add a new one, we just type, for example, PL. Mm. And so we can just copy it. And just write. Sorry for Polish, maybe I should do it in Ukrainian. So now I find a new, uh, new language translation, I save it. And I need to restart NPM, so this yeah I, I usually just close it and and run it again so not sure if, if, if there is better option uh, you don't need to run as administrator but and now you need to go to the uh, proper. I have a lot of things in the memory. You need to go to the 
file to the path where you have installed this uh, Grafana uh, simple JSON value mapper. So I have it in the history, so it's, uh, it's much easier. And I just run npm start. And then it starts uh, using this new file. It's also important to restart the Grafana service on your computer, just yeah, in Windows services, if you use Windows. And now if I refresh Grafana, of course, now we would need to set, edit this variable, which retrieves the languages. So we, I would need to add PL, yes, and update it. And we will see if it works because I'm not sure. Okay, it works. <laughs> So you see now it appears here, all of these uh, translations. So it works like this for this solution, the solution number one, uh, which works mostly with titles. And uh, solution number two, we have this input translation file. And I would like to show you how to input the new translation. Uh, so we need to do it on this, uh, admin uh, on the site with admin access to database and just click add data uh, line protocol there are some uh, some other options um like csv upload maybe this one could be useful but i didn't need a lot of translations so this one was uh, good enough and I have an uh, example. Example of new translations. Okay, this one actually exists. Um, yeah. I added even some more like uh, Ukrainian and Polish. I added elevator. Uh, so here we can type even new. Uh, categories, new languages, even if they don't exist in the previous ones. So we just, it, this, this will just appear, the new, uh, new, uh, new language will just appear. So if we add more, uh, didn't check how to update the previous ones. So this maintenance of this solution, probably there is a, a kind of program which allows to maintain it. Yes, most important thing is that we need to have the space at the end. And hooray, it works. So it means we should see it inside the explore uh, term. And we have UA. You see there is like lift and machine. I machine, I added it previously. And Polish, yes, I added this machine when I, uh, I was checking if it works for sure. So we have this new two categories. And inside the Grafana, and I go to the dashboard, which uses this, um, this solution. I can just go to variables. I need to add, of course, these new languages. And it's not easy to go back to variables when you did something. I just copy the existing one because the query is always the same. And add a new one. We can call it the uh, uh, elevator, for example. Query. I like the, this inflect DB translations. Uh, data source query here. And to check if it was like this. Okay. And we see the preview here, so it should work. So we have now the new variable T elevator. I can check if it works if I, now I'm not sure how, yeah, 
should work. So if I change, for example, we have T selected, if we change it to elevator, work. I'm sorry, now we created this new variable and we need to hide it on, on the dashboard level. So we need to hide variable. And if we select, yes, for the previous ones, we don't have these translations because I added this new category, Polish and Ukrainian. But this should, yeah, it works for all other languages. So, so we, I, I added only this uh, lift translation for Ukrainian and Polish. This is why it, it displays none. So if we don't have the previous translations available for these two new languages, this will display none. Yeah, so it works like this. I could maybe uh, duplicate this view and wanted to add one more. machine so there is one more which i added yesterday this translation database which works only for polish and ukrainian i think so okay. yeah. I will just hide it on the dashboard level. Yeah, so this is example I added yesterday for Polish and Ukrainian. This machina and, and lift I added now, yes, on, during the presentation. Yeah, but we don't have translations in previ previously existing uh, languages for this two. So it works like this. I'm sorry for switching so much between the presentation and and the programs. So I'm checking if I uh, omit something because I jump so many times. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, so if you have any questions, maybe it was a kind of chaotic. I'm sorry for this. Maybe you can write in the chat. 